Hey everybody, welcome back to another training video. Today's episode is going to be the next step in my scent detection dog training series. Just like everything we do in dog training, we always want to keep in mind the concept of predictability. We're going to be using that while we're training our dog in this step in the scent detection process. Before doing this, you want to make sure your dog knows the markers. If you don't know what a marker is, check out these videos where I explain and demonstrate exactly how you could teach your dog the concept of marker training, which is very important when we're doing scent detection. Now we're going to be using all three containers today, the center block, bucket, as well as the boxes. And we're going to have them laid out in three different formations. One, a straight line, the next one, a circle, and the last one, they're going to be elevated. This is going to help our dog become generalized to the training, meaning they're going to start understanding that it's whenever they find the odor is when they're going to receive the reward. Anytime I'm doing scent detection, I do continual reinforcement, meaning every single time my dog gets to the odor, my dog's going to receive the reward. Now during this step, we're not worried about our dogs indicating on the odor, but rather getting to the odor. Once they get to that odor, we are going to mark and reward. We're gonna do this every time while changing the odor to different locations throughout the training process. This is going to help build our dog's confidence, showing them that every time you get to a container with an odor, you're going to receive a reward. It's a very simple concept. Next training session, it's gonna be a little bit more in depth as far as getting our dog to realize they need to stop and they need to indicate on the odor. But in today's session, all we're going to be doing is making sure once our dog gets to the container with the odor, we are going to use their terminal marker and allow them to come get the reward. With Ari, I'm going to be using food as a reward. However, you can also use toys. The reason why I'm choosing not to use toys during this training exercise with Ari is because she gets so amped up for a toy that I don't want her to become tired too quickly, which is going to reduce the amount of repetitions that I'm able to get in this training session. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, when I do this exercise, I simply give one search command and I'm going to point to my dog to show which container I want my dog to search into. So what some trainers will do is they will say the search command on every single container, meaning they'll say it and they'll point. They'll say it and they'll point. They'll say it and they'll point. I like to say it one time and then I'll point to the first one once my dog starts the behavior. Then I simply just continue the physical cue. All right, <laughs> All right come on baby, go climb. Then I simply just continue the physical cue up until my dog gets to the one with the odor. The moment my dog gets to the container with the odor, I'm gonna use my terminal marker and reward. This is a very simple exercise. When our dog gets to the one with the odor, you don't have to get really excited and try to get the toy out within a second. That was something that would throw off students that I trained with in the past. They would get to the one with the odor and they would try to get the toy out or the food out really fast. Now in this example, I'm gonna be using food. The reason for that is my dog gets so amped up for a toy that if I was to use a toy, she's going to wear herself out very quickly and we're not going to be able to do that many reps. So I'm going to be rewarding with food. So the moment she gets to the container that has the odor, I'm going to use my terminal marker, which for me it's F-R-E-E, -E, and then she's going to come to me and get the reward. I'm not going to go beyond the one that has the odor. So when our dogs get better and they start to really understand the concept, let's say the odor is in this one, which it is, I would continue to point to the next one to make sure my dog knows to stay on the one with the odor. But in this early step, or these early stages rather, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna wait till my dog gets to the one with the odor and then I'm gonna mark and reward. So it should look a little something like this. Search. Free. Good girl. Very nice, come on. Then what I like to do is I like to move it around. So I'm gonna take this one I'm gonna put it at the very last position. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Search. Free. Good girl, very nice. Now I'm gonna take it and move it to another position. Make sure you know which one has the odor. So I have this one marked where I can tell I know it has the odor just by looking at it, even though every single one looks the same to my dog. So. This one, I have a little piece of tape that goes across here that lets me know this is the one with the odor so I don't mix it up. Here we go, we're gonna do it again. Search, free, good girl. Now I'm gonna move it again. Good 
Search. Free. Good. And we'll move it again. Search. Free. Very good, Ari. You can see it's a very simple exercise and you want to do this enough to build your dog's confidence to where they know when they get to the one that has the odor, that's when they're going to receive the reward. You want them seeking the container with the odor that you're trying to teach your dog. So again, very simple exercise. Make sure you do enough of these to build your dog's confidence, get them to understand it, and then you can move on to the next step. With this exercise, I'm also going to be doing it with the buckets as well as the boxes, the items that we introduce to our dogs in the very first step of this training. So make sure you go through it with all different items. That's going to help our dogs generalize the training and it's going to make it much easier when we start doing real life scenarios. So what we're gonna do with this, we have our dog placed on a climb platform and one of these containers has the odor. So this one right here has the odor. Each center block looks the same to our dog. So each one has a container inside of it, just like we showed on the other video. And this is the only one with the odor. So that's the only thing that separates the one container with the odor from the containers that do not have the odor. There's no visual difference. So on this one, I'm going to be guiding my dog, not giving her an opportunity to run wherever she wants. I want her to figure out the pattern that I'm gonna be showing her in order to find the odor. So I'm gonna give her the one search command and I'm going to guide her by using the physical cue throughout the process. So it's gonna look something like this. Search. Free, good girl, very nice. And then I can give her her reward. Now, just like the last video, I'm using food. However, you can use toys. If your dog prefers toys over food, do the exact same thing that I'm doing right now, but instead of bringing out food, you can use a toy. So we're gonna move this. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I just did. Search. Free. Good girl, very nice. And we're gonna move it again. Search. She skipped that one. Free. Good girl. Climb. Try one more time. Search. Search. Free. Good girl. Very nice. Climb. Let's move the container. She almost tripped me up a little bit on that one. And now what you can do, if you're worried about your dog watching you, you can act like you're putting a reward in each container. So you can do this, I call it the little magic trick. I act like I'm putting food in each container. And then when I get to the last one, I go, oh, it's in one of them. Climb. Making sure I got the right one, okay. Search. Good girl, very nice. All right, we'll go to the very first one. Sometimes when you're teaching this, if you don't set the odor in the first cinder block or the first bucket, whatever it is that you're using, your dog may skip the first one. So it is important to set it in the very first position as well. We really wanna rotate it around and have the odor be in every single different position that you could place the cinder blocks. Search. Free. Good girl. Search. Free. Good girl. Excellent job, Ari. Come on, baby. Search. Free. Good girl. Search. Free. Very good, Ari. Climb. Search. Free. Very nice, excellent. I hope you guys enjoyed today's training session. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Also, certain things that I use in the video, such as the treats that I use, as well as my training vest, if you're interested in those, they are in the description below. There will be a link provided for your convenience. All right, thanks again, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.